the entitled, delusional, slash lost, and wealthy woman. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Brothers, this is going to be maybe a three to five part video discussion or reflection on a relationship I was involved in prior to meeting my wife, maybe two years prior to meeting my wife. Now, you may ask yourself, how is this married brother able to discuss a relationship with another woman that doesn't involve his wife? Well, that's easy. Before I was married, I was a man. And uh, I'm a die man. So, you know, there was a life before my wife. I was in relationships before my wife. You know, as a student of life, you acquire many lessons. And you learn from those lessons, hopefully. Now, as a teacher of life, you have an obligation to share those lessons, to teach other people, to help other people. And so that's what I use my platform for. Now, having said that, there's a way to do that, to be respectful uh, in your delivery, in your wording, in your energy. So, you know, I gave the wife a heads up, you know, got her take on what she thought, what the, what the premise was, what the intent was in sharing some of these stories with uh, other women prior to her. And she agreed. She's like, yeah, yeah, uh, that'd be helpful. You know, and that's what my platform is for. It's called a toast to the men. So, you know, I was, uh, I was born a male. Uh, I was a male before I was married, of course. I was a man before I was married. I had relationships before I was married. And I'm going to die, man. And it would be a sin for me to die with these lessons uh, just because I'm married and um, I didn't want to offend her when so many brothers and people, women in general, uh, people in general, I'm sorry, people in general can learn from these lessons. These lessons are not to be taken to the grave with us. But like I said, there's a way to deliver these where, where you can be respectful uh, so I give these lessons in love, man. They're rooted in love. It's not to judge. I try to stay objective. And uh, it's to teach. And they got to be shared. So, like I said, I met this, this woman uh, maybe in 2008, 2008, 2009. <clears throat> met her at a restaurant. We didn't know each other prior to the restaurant. She was uh, going to the restroom. We caught each other's attention. Um, we both stopped and uh, introduced ourselves, sparked up a conversation. Man, 10 minutes later, we're exchanging numbers and, and there you go. Now, there's a lot that I didn't know in the beginning when I met this woman. But I'll tell you this, uh, she was, I was maybe 31 at the time, 30, 31 maybe. And she had to be, I think, five or six years older than me. So after initial meeting, we uh, conversed on the phone maybe three or four times over the course of a week and a half, maybe. And so we decided to meet up for a date. We met up for a date, had drinks, went well. Um, it's something I noticed immediately as uh, we were exiting the venue we had to date at. She wanted to me to notice what she was driving and um i think she had just gotten this vehicle she had uh, a brand new jaguar the the big body the brand new one man and uh it was nice 
but uh, she she had valet, and the valet brought her car up, and uh, as you know, it was it was obvious that was her car. She looked back at me and wanted to see my reaction. So I was like, hey, it's, it's nice. And she goes on to say, yeah, I almost, almost drove the Range Rover, <clears throat> but I decided to bring this out. So in my head, I'm like, come on, man. Like, no, <laughs> you, you got a stunt. But hey, it is what it is, right? <clears throat> so that date ends. We go on another date. And uh, fast forward, for some reason, man, she, uh, after the second date, one day during the day, she invites me to her residence uh, just to hang out. She want, wants to cook lunch for me. You know, um, now she had already told me that she had twin boys. I think at the time they were maybe 14 or 15 years old but they would be at school. She wanted me to come through. She was gonna prepare lunch for me. And at the time, I didn't have a nine to five. I was a, a full-time entrepreneur. I had a skincare line, a uh, skincare line I created. Uh, I created the recipes, formulated the product, boxed them myself, myself uh, the whole nine, man. Uh, so I was doing fairly good. Uh, so I had time, you know, I could get away. So, um, I'll go out there, man, we stay maybe, wow, maybe an hour away from each other. So I got, go out there and, um, uh, I kind of get lost. I can't find the, uh, the community. She says she's in a gated community and I can't find it. So I eventually find it. And man, this thing is ducked off. This community is ducked off. You, you wouldn't even know. It was it was out there, it's hitting. And so um, she buzzes me in. I come through the, the gated the gated community and uh you know go to, to her estate. And I don't, I don't say house, I said estate. I mean, this is a huge, huge property, man. Uh, so at this time I'm wondering, like, damn, what does this woman do? Okay, she said. She has a Range Rover. I saw the brand new Jag. And now, man, I'm pulling up to this huge property. I'm talking about huge fellas. And so I get there, you know, park, you know. Uh, she tells me to park in the driveway. I can't park on the street, park on the driveway. And so, you know. I get there, I come in. So we chop it up, chatting for a bit, man, talking. She's preparing lunch, she's cooking something. She's preparing something, I can't remember. Uh, but she says, there's something I gotta tell you. So I'm like, what's up? And she's like, I'm married. So I'm like, what? So I immediately get nervous. It's like, what the? You know, like, damn, you invite me, you invite me to this man's house. So I'm like, whoa, whoa. I said, man, so I started looking around. <laughs> Just by instinct, I started looking around. Like, man, I don't want somebody to hit me from the back. I'm like, I'm in another man's house. And she's like, no, no. Uh, he's in a re rehabilitation center, a nursing home. Uh, he won't be coming back here. Probably ever. I'm like, so what's up? So she says, a year ago, or just over a year ago, he was in a uh, motorcycle accident. I think it was raining. He was driving into work. And uh, he was trying to avoid a sudden stop, hitting a car that had suddenly stopped in front of him. And so he had to lay down the bike. Now, I'm not a motorcycle rider, but you riders out there, you know this terminology. And I remember her using this terminology. She said he had to lay it down. When he laid down the bike to avoid crashing, I believe that's how that went. Uh, 
he hit his head. Now, I don't know if he hit his head on the concrete or another vehicle, but he hit his head. And, man, uh, he experienced traumatic, uh, a traumatic brain injury. It was, it was pretty bad. And uh, long story short about that, basically, the doctor said he, he uh, emotionally and, I guess, mentally, he had reverted back maybe to the level of a three-year-old. Now, man, let me tell you a little about, tell you a little bit about her husband, this gentleman. Um, and I had to learn a lesson from from that. Man, this brother, um, and I say brother, and he is a brother, as far as he's he's a man. But I just remember something. She's black. She's African-American, black, whatever. He's white. Okay? I'll say that. Now, yes, I'm black. He's white. I can still call him brother. You know? But I had to point that out because by me saying brother, you're going to automatically think he's black. But no, he's white. And that's going to play an important role piece in the story later on, him being white and her being black. But anyway, this brother uh, was a, or at the time is, but was a part owner, a partner. He was a partner in an oil and gas company or oil and gas firm, small, but very profitable firm, oil and gas firm. Now, man, I've uh, worked in IT for years, and one of those, uh, on one of my projects, I worked at the oil and gas. Well, actually, a couple of projects, I worked at the oil and gas uh, company. And I know they bring in money, no matter big or small, they bring in a lot of money. So this brother was a, a wealthy man, a millionaire, a multimillionaire, wealthy, wealthy. And I'm not talking about two or three mil, I'm talking about, he, he was up there, man. And, uh, yeah, overnight, just next day, man, he has the mentality of a three-year-old from an accident. He had accomplished a lot. Um, she showed me a blog where uh, friends and coworkers and, and his partners were speaking on this blog she had created and uh, wishing him well, wishing him a recovery. Uh, speaking highly of him. He was a man well-respected in his community, in his profession. Uh, family and friends respected him. You know, from, from all intents and purposes, purposes, he, he, he was a, a, a phenomenal man. You know, a respected man. Uh, but just like that, man, an accident can change all that. And that was a lesson I learned just from that that man, it doesn't matter how much money you got, how healthy you are. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter how much money you got, how healthy you are, how much education you have, how respected you are. We can't predict what life is going to give us. 